Hi there, plebeian viewers, and welcome to a special quarantine edition of Crit Day. It's been a long time since I've done a uh, Crit Day episode. It's been a crazy year so far, both good and bad, obviously, with the whole world being in a bit of the bad right now. Um, but I miss talking to you guys, and I don't quite have the time to do the uh, manicured, scripted, planned out videos that I wanted to do. We'll get back to those at some point, but I figured for our special quarantine editions of Crit Day, I'm just going to turn on my webcam, rant for 10 minutes, and hopefully give you guys something to uh, take away from. That being said... Seltzer water is so good. What I wanted to do today was talk about 10 artists that you should be following. Um, obviously, being stuck inside right now, we're on our phones a lot, we're on our screens a lot, um, and while I do believe that you should put them down, perhaps work on your own creative process, if you do need some art to pick you up, then take a look at these guys and gals. Ugh. <clears throat> the first artist who uh, whose work I've really been digging lately is... Alex Ekman Lawn. Um, I've had the pleasure of meeting Alex on several occasions, getting him, getting to know him a little bit. We did a Prime Cuts interview with him a while back, and this dude makes some really awesome work. I'll uh, flip through it right here um, as we go. But lately, he's been doing these really cool new pieces uh, where the material is it's woven i mean i don't even really know how to describe it we're gonna run th we're gonna run into that a lot is where non-scripted i don't really know how to talk about things alex makes these super cool um layered images uh he uses a lot of sourced imagery and then he cuts and breaks through the surfaces to layer it up he makes them digitally or he makes actual shadow boxes of them and the depth and what you get out of these images is really cool. And the added feature of uh, the woven paper, I mean, I don't even know if it's paper. I feel like so often I think he does something real and then it turns out to be digital. But the added element of the woven material just adds a whole new layer and new way to skew the form. He was also nice enough last time I saw him to give me this really cool sticker. I don't know if you can see that, but this area in here is shiny, so it's like it's glossy, catches the light. Really dope stuff. Next up is Raymond Maiden. Um, I actually came across this guy in uh, the tattoo world. Big into uh, tattoos. I follow a lot of tattoo artists, and I think... Inked Mag, one of those magazines, one of the artists, they shared this guy's work. He sources photos, sources illustrations, um, just any sort of past imagery, um, a lot of historical resource stuff, and he illustrates over top of them. Uh, he does a lot of stuff referencing traditional tattoo work, um, a lot of religious imagery. It's, it's really cool stuff, uh, the way that he kind of goes in and cleanly lays down stuff like tattoos over historical imagery. He gives new light to a whole bunch of different stuff. He's got some diversity in his work. He, uh, he does these cool flowing swords that kind of like whip through some of his works. Um, he'll sometimes black out entire uh, characters in images, which is... Another interesting aspect it, it, he's just a really cool, he's just got a really cool body of work that he takes from adjusting historical imagery. And it's really interesting to watch how he takes a relatively simple photo and adds a new modern touch to it, especially with how uh, popular tattoos are today and how normal they are today. Next up is Anthony Ron, Rondinone. I feel like I'm never going to be good at names. Rondinone does a lot of portraits. Um, he does some continuous line drawing portraits, which are pretty cool. They're reminiscent of uh, Adam Rich's work, and I'm a big Adam Rich's fan. But my favorite work of his is he does these painted portraits, and the faces are these globby, clumpy things thick impasto stacks of paint and they they really draw you in to look because everything 
else in the image, the shoulders, the neck, the position, the hair, it, it makes you want to see a face. So you really just dive into this pile of paint and try to, to recognize um, features. And some, you know, you can kind of see where the eyes would be, see where the nose would be, and some are just totally mashed swirls. Um, any recognizability is totally gone. But these these paintings are super rad. These have been uh, some of my favorites recently. <clears throat> Next on my list is Vincent Girano. Uh, another guy who I did a recent Prime Cuts interview with. His work is super cool. Um, he does representational, we'll call it. I don't want to say, uh, realist. I feel like that's always dicey when I say that about an artist's work. This guy's work is cool because he plays with our perception a lot. Uh, he knows how to lay down paint and represent a scene or character or an overall image in a way that we perceive it as super real. And he's got a level of refinement that's incredible in some of his work. Super, super, you could even say hyper-realist. Um, but sometimes, especially in a smaller work, it will be really globby and loose, but when you see it as a, at a distance, especially on something like Instagram, when I'm looking at it at phone size, it looks super real. And then when you enlarge it and look in, you start to see that, uh, that realism or that representationalism sort of fall apart. And it's, it's, it's really cool stuff. And once you've seen a few of the works like that, you kind of want to dive into every painting of his that you see, because you're like, Oh, is this a, is this a hyper realist one? Or is this one where he kind of, uh, or is this one where he skewed the image and I've got to look deeper to see where the, where the detail falls apart. Next up, I think we're halfway there. Fuck. Um, is Bill Ellis, uh, Bill Ellis, Bill, El Bill Ellis. I don't know if, I don't know if this is one name that I'm looking at or two. Truthfully, I do not know that much about this guy's work. I've been following for a long time. Um, really awesome 3d rendered skulls. Uh, they've got a, he, he really manipulates light and shine, a lot of gold. Um, I thought these were sculptures when I first saw them, but uh, the more you look at them and the more you see what and how he does what he does, you realize that a lot of these are, uh, are rendered even though he replicates material well enough for it to feel as if it's a sculpture. Um, just super aesthetically pleasing stuff. Uh, I like skulls. My next painter that I've been following is Pascal Molman. He is a representational painter in two ways that I really like. And one, it's that it's not overly refined. It's really, really solid representation, but he allows brushstroke to breathe. He lets it be a painting, which I enjoy. I respect the hell out of painters who can do these large scale representational paintings that feel like a photo, the super, super hyper realist stuff. But I really like painting, so I don't want to see something that looks a whole lot like a photo. Like, I want to see paint. I want to see brushstroke. I want to see how the artist did it. Um, so I really respect that. And he also approaches uh, scenes, these really, really intricate scenes with a whole lot of action, a whole lot of character stuff. And it's just got this fun, satirical feel. Um, they're really crowded. They say a whole lot. He's gone as far as doing um, some classical uh religious scenes but with uh five naked ladies and a uh and a skater dude i mean he does these really um odd still lives where it's just i don't un <laughs> i really want to understand the image relationship perhaps that's what's so exciting about it is for example you've got a plum and a tube of lipstick you've got a bitten jelly donut and a thermometer uh an apple a butt plug and some used matches just all sorts of um 
random stuff. I don't know why it goes together, but the the want in me as an art fan to sort of figure that out really uh, really got me fascinated with this guy's work. And his his scene paintings are no different. There's so much going on. So uh, there's a whole lot to take in, a whole lot to engage with. Next up is Alex Grant. Garant? I feel like I'm butchering people's names. Another representational painter. If you haven't figured out yet what I what I like a lot for my own personal art viewing, then you know, just watch the rest of the video. It'll be pretty clear. Um, Garant is, uh, again, another representational painter. She does these really cool... Um, I don't even really know how to describe them. They're skewed human forms. Uh, particularly around the eyes, it's like blurry. So if you were to like rub your eyes and then you open them and you kind of see a person's eyes split or you got bad vision, I don't know, shout out 2020, uh, not the year, my eyesight. So these, these paintings really, really mess with your head the way that they're able to effectively capture warped vision and kind of break up the eyes. There's like four or five eyes. They're blurry. They're layered. Really, um, really masterful representational talent. I don't, as well as her work, she also is an artist who shares a lot of process photos, which I'm a huge fan of. I love to see um, how art is made and something like social media, I think should be a peek into what the artist is. I can go to a fucking gallery and just look at a collection of your images. Let's see a little bit more. Next up, breaking away from painting a little bit, is a sculptor who I've been following a whole lot, and that is Paolo Grissino. I believe he is Italian. I hope I'm not wrong in saying that. I haven't been following Paolo for long, but he has got a really interesting uh, body of work, I think close to like 35 years of stuff. He skews the, hu or he skews animal and human forms in a way that's really interesting. He makes large scale in, uh, installations, full on exhibits. Uh, his work is very experiential. He's been doing a whole bunch of stuff with broken glass recently. For example, some cast heads with shards of broken glass coming out of it. He's done work uh, of figures in hoodies and coming out of the hood is a collection of sticks. Um, he's got two characters with a big steel beam uh, projecting through their faces. Just a lot of really interesting sculpture. Stuff that fascinates me both uh, process-wise and visually. I believe a lot of his work is cast, so it's really cool to see how um, artists take something like a cast and kind of skew it to make it their own and make it something that's new and not just a one-to-one -one representation of what they cast. Um, another artist who I've been following pretty heavily is uh, Brian Wooden. When I started following Brian, he was doing these um, large-scale black and gray um, figurative paintings on unstretched canvas. Uh, there was a lot of like torsos, um, you know, like the classic Greek broken sculpture of just the torso. Uh, a lot of that, a lot of busts. Um, and then looking into his work some more, you see that he's got um, a side of graffiti in his work. He does work um, representing the human figure pretty closely. He does work skewing the human figure. He does more cartoon of work. Uh, he just had a huge immersive exhibition called Loose where he really went back into that graffiti style illustration. Um, so he's a really diverse artist. If you're like me and you kind of started out with graffiti style doodles doing uh, names and little characters and then you progressed into more representational work, uh, this is an artist for you because he has both, has done both, and is continuously doing both. Last up on our little list here is Jillian Evelyn, um, another artist who I've been following for a while, but unfortunately another artist that I don't know a whole lot about. I've reached out to Jillian before, um, never heard back. That's the unfortunate part of the process of being a remote interviewer is that a lot of people I reach out to I don't hear back from, which is fine. But she does these really retro feeling uh, representations of women. A lot of bold yet matte colors, um, really stylized, simple, 
almost uh, Picasso-esque, but a little bit more clean and modern in the graphic sense. Her color palette and even her style really feels 50-ish. A lot of uh, pastel matte colors, um, a lot of soft pinks, soft yellows, soft oranges. Just really, really fascinating stuff. Uh, her figures are often contorted, twisted, and in interesting poses. Again, just work that the uh, the art critic in me can't find a whole lot of process worthy stuff to talk about like I usually do, but just stuff that I like a lot. And she's an artist whose new work I always really look forward to seeing. Thanks so much for watching this first quarantine edition of Crit Day. I'm going to try to put one of these out every day until we're allowed outside again or until I go completely batshit crazy. Um, subscribe to the YouTube. We've got a whole bunch of stuff as well as podcast highlights coming up every Wednesday. And if you're interested in the full podcast, did I say interesting? And if you're interested in the full podcast, you can check that out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and SoundCloud. If you'd like to read interviews with some of the artists that I talked about today, as well as all the other interviews and content that we have, you can check out www.plebeian.us. You can follow us on Instagram at, at plebeian underscore us for everything, including where Crit Day and the podcast is hosted. You can check out our journalistic Instagram at, at plebeian.mag. I'm going to share links to all of the artists I talked about, especially if we have content with them down below. I even have content with some of these artists coming. If you'd like to hear more from me, check out all that because I'm all over it. And you can follow me on Instagram at, at Forest Hines Art. I've been painting a whole lot during this quarantine and I do a lot of it live. So come hang out with me while I work and go crazy and uh, let's chat. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.